Cucurbitaceae, the cucumber or pumpkin family. Characteristics of the cucurber, Cucurbitaceae, it's a dicot, worldwide distribution, but particularly tropical. Essentially all species are uh, frost sensitive. These are usually annual vines, a uh, few woody species uh, here and there, but uh, by and large all annuals. The leaves are alternate and they're palmately lobed or palmately compound. And if you recall, palmate is like your palm. So think uh, big maple leaves. They distinctively all have tendrils on the opposite side of um, uh, where the petioles are. And uh, those, of course, are used to uh, help them climb. The stems are pentangular, which means five-sided, and usually uh, hairy or very hairy. Big white flowers, uh, or sometimes big yellow flowers, the flowers are unisexual. They're either male or female. So uh, they're separate. If they're on the same plant, it's considered uh, monoecious. And if they're on different plants, they're considered dioecious. The fruit is a peepole. And uh, these are among the earliest cultivated plants on record, uh, prehistoric, and uh, more for containers than food initially. Uh, economically important members, squashes, melons, gourds, similar things. Here's some lovely drawings of the plants. You can see the large flower on the left is a female. And uh, note the, uh, the gourd-like thing developing below the flower. That's called an inferior ovary. Inferior not being as uh, less good, uh, but below uh, where the flower is. And uh, on the, in the middle are, is the male flower, or stigma, I mean uh, pollen, anther, and filament. On the far right, uh, pretty much the same, except that it does show you the little curly tendrils up at the very top of the picture, which are an important feature of this, plant, this uh, family. These uh, cucurbitaceae are in the order cucurbitales. There are about 125 genera worldwide with about 900 species. It's a distinct family. There's not a lot of close relatives, so we're not subject to uh, plants being, uh, species being added or subtracted or split up. Uh, within the family, there is, of course, some bickering amongst taxonomists, but uh, at least it's not like the Rosaceae or something where you have uh, enormous uh, splits. <coughs> Here we are on our uh, plant evolutionary tree. We will, uh, one of these days, be seeing things uh, not up in the asterids or rosids, but this is up uh, on the rosid section of the tree. Notable species, uh, the squashes are uh, cucurbita species. Uh, Hubbard and buttercup squash, uh, buttercup being one of my favorites, uh, is Cucurbita maxida. Butternut squash is Cucurbita moschata. And most pumpkins, acorn, summer squash, zucchinis are Cucurbita people. Uh, gourds, used for a lot of reasons. Some of them are Cucurbita, most of them are Langenaria species. Muskmelons are distinct from the squashes, and that's uh, Cucumus mellow. And lufa sponges, used for a lot of things uh, besides sponges. And there's uh, three or four genera that uh, are used to make lufa. So here's an edible example of the Cucurbitaceae squash. See some lovely pictures on the um, right-hand side. These are cultivated in Central America over 10,000 years ago. And they're one of what is called the three sisters of plants that were cultivated by Native Americans. And that was maize, beans, and squash being the sisters. Maize, um, another word for corn. And they planted them together, which I thought was an interesting um, uh, efficiency. The corn stalk ended up being a support for the beans and uh, it provides shade for the squash. So uh, good combination. And then, of course, the beans also provide nitrogen to the soil. Uh, summer squashes, zucchini, crookneck, patty pan, those up in the upper right I think are called patty pan. Harvested before maturity, eaten sometimes uh, uh, raw or with just a little cooking, and they don't uh, tend to keep well. And the other type of you know, broad category of squash is winter squashes, like acorn, pumpkin, butternut, uh, the things you see more in the lower right photograph. Uh, harvest at maturity, they store well, uh, take considerably longer to eat, and generally you're not going to eat the outside uh, rind. Uh, and sometimes squash seeds are, are used for foods, either eaten directly or as a paste. Uh, occasionally they're uh, pressed for oil. Uh, shoots and leaves and tendrils are occasionally eaten as greens, uh, obviously from younger plants. 
And even the flowers are an important part of many Native American recipes. They're pretty big flowers. I can uh, imagine they would have uh, be big enough to consume. And uh, historically, these are insect uh, pollinated, historically pollinated by native bees, but now it's generally honeybees or even by hand in some cases. There are some really big squashes. Obviously, I should have included some of these when I did the largest plants parts. Uh, on the left is a squash that is, um, the guy got a record for the heaviest squash ever produced. I don't know if they were specifically not including pumpkins. But at any rate, um, his weighed about 1,500 pounds, which somebody calculated would be uh, 5,400 servings of squash. It weighed more than a polar bear. And his secret was lots of fertilizer. He said, among other things, he was to get an award for, this, uh, for winning this uh, uh, competition. In addition, he can sell the seeds probably for uh, $40 each. There is uh, quite a competition in the large squash category. Um, around the world. On the lower right is a picture from our state fair. If you haven't gone to see the big squashes that are brought in there, or big pumpkins uh, every year, it's uh, pretty entertaining. And then in the upper left is um, apparently the biggest pumpkin everybody's uh, managed to document, a ton. So um, that's, a, that's a lot of pumpkin pies. Another category of edible cucurbitaceae is the muskmelon, of which there are, not surprisingly, several varieties. Um, uh, watermelon is, is considered a melon. It is actually Citrullus uh, lanatus. And uh, you can see a, a watermelon stalls there uh, in Russia. Uh, oddly enough, in Eastern Europe, there's a lot of watermelon love. Um, in the upper right are, is a couple varieties of uh, muskmelon. There's a couple uh, different uh, uh, subspecies. Cantilupensis was developed in the 1700s in Italy and um, is a, has a rough uh, kind of warty skin, as opposed to what we think of as a true muskmelon, which has a reticulated skin. And then, of course, there's cassava and honeydew, our um, uh, cucumis, cucumis mellow indoris, uh, are the sort of yellow and green ones. And there are uh, many other varieties, too. Cucurbitaceae is very important um, in uh, production of things that are used for uh, vessels. The fact that they uh, can make this round um, uh, structure is used from everything from um, containers of all sorts and sizes, uh, utensils, floats to keep nets and, and things um, up in the water, musical instruments, motorcycle helmets, I think I would probably prefer fiberglass, hats of all types, pipes. Um, a lot of different creativity gone into uh, using these, um, these uh, fruits. There's many different shapes. Uh, long and sh long, long, long are uh, very short and squat, uh, round or sort of bottle shaped, uh, like the gentleman in the lower left. Um, you can see how that would be quite convenient for uh, uh, transporting and drinking water. Um, sometimes they're decorated very ornately. When they're um, used for musical instruments, uh, you can see the, the um, I don't know, it looks kind of like a ukulele uh, in the upper left, a very elaborate de decor, or this sort of a, a coffee cup looking thing um, above that. And um, these are often called calabash or bottle gourds. Uh, calabash is, a, is used in a lot of other um, uh, continents. Uh, one of the first cultivated plants in the world for containers, not so much for consumption. So when people were still hunter-gatherers, uh, they needed vessels for a variety of reasons, and uh, the ability of these plants to uh, produce a big ground watertight structure was uh, invaluable. Uh, you can see the guy on the right playing uh, some kind of a drum type thing that uh, has been constructed from um, a gourd. On the upper left is uh, a, a gourd in the process of growing, and naturally um, having that constriction in the middle are uh, useful for a lot of different reasons. These uh, came to the New World, or in the New World, which is uh, North America, South America, um, and although people think they probably originated in Asia and Europe and uh, were brought here um, pre-historic uh, days when uh, the water levels were so low that there was a land bridge from uh, Eastern Asia to um, uh, Alaska. The Aleutian Islands were um, uh, much higher above water, and a lot of people crossed over then. And it's thought that uh, seeds of this, um, uh, these gourds were brought with them. Iowa natives. Uh, we have the burr cucumber, Cicchios angulatus. And um, this is quite common in eastern Iowa. I've seen it in central Iowa, but it's, it's more common eastern. It's a vine up to 25 feet long. You can see the leaves there. And some, the flowers are quite tiny. 
It likes a little bit of wet conditions, so think riverbanks and uh, floodplain forests. Uh, it has monoecious flowers, like uh, many in this species, so that means the male and the female um, are separate but on the same plant. And um, it has hairy stems and produces these little sort of burrs of um, fruits that are, you know, half inch, three quarter inch long, uh, which is different from the next one we're going to see, wild cucumber, which has bigger single fruits and smooth stems. And in some areas, um, it's actually a crop pest. On the lower right is um, a wild cuc or burr cucumber growing on a corn crop. So you could see that would be quite frustrating if it was to um, take over your cornfield. But you can also see what the, uh, the, the features that the native peoples were extrapolating when they were growing their um, uh, beans and squashes with their crops, with their corn. Uh, another Iowa native is the wild cucumber. So not the burr cucumber, the wild cucumber. It's a different genus, Echinocystis lobata, um, a smooth vine. If you see in this previous picture, whoops. Um, the stems are quite hairy, you can see in the lower left picture, whereas um, for the uh, wild cucumber we have smooth stems. And the fruits are single and much larger, a couple inches in diameter and hanging in, in single units, not um, uh, little clusters of nutlets like uh, the burr cucumber. The leaves are more lobed also, they look uh, more like a maple leaf. This one's common in northwest Iowa. Toxicity. Uh, there is a family of chemicals called cuber cucurbitacins that are um, predominant in cucurbitaceae. They're also in a lot of other plants, but um, they're isolated commonly from uh, this family. Toxic to many animals, responsible for, for a very bitter taste, and they're among the most bitter uh, compounds that human um, tongues taste as far as um, degree of bitterness per amount of um, compound. They are steroids uh, with um, uh, many, many, many different derivatives. There's one there shown for you. Probably grown, uh, used by the plants, produced by the plants to prevent her herbivory. The bitterness uh, presumably would uh, deter uh, animals from eating them. There's many, many variants. If you look on the wiki page, uh, they're just lettered A all the way through T. And then there's a variety of other ones. Uh, sometimes used as a purgative, uh, so sort of like the Ipecac syrup. And um, one of the modes of action is these are cytotoxic. They cause cell death. So they uh, sometimes are used in assays in petri dishes where you're testing toxicity and, and how cells are going to um, respond to different chemicals. For more information, of course, here's Wikipedia. Uh, the Hawaii people have a pretty good uh, uh, description of the family. This uh, succulentplant.com has uh, quite a bit about the cucurbits. Uh, the cucurbitacins also on wiki. And if you're interested in big pumpkin competitions, this smarttravel.com has an actual list of uh, uh, big pumpkin competitions. You can do a big circuit in the fall and go and see who got the, the biggest pumpkins. As a hint, I would say don't go to places where they have a drought, uh, whereas last year our state fair uh, largest pumpkin was considerably smaller than the, the winners in uh, 2007, 8, and 9 when it was uh, so, so wet. So uh, that concludes the cucurbitaceae.